Okay, hello. This is going to be a review slash appreciation of some old comics. This is Avengers circa 1970s. Uh, I This is the Avengers trade edition of Serpent Crown. I picked this because uh, basically it has a lot of sentimental value for me. It's total nostalgia. I remember these comics when they came out back in the uh, mid-70s. And... Um, you know, this is like my first introduction to like Marvel Comics, my first introduction to the Avengers, my first introduction to um, George Perez art. Uh, this collects Avengers 141 through 144 and also 147 through 149. And just like to talk about it a little bit, anybody that likes old school Marvel Comics, Silver Age Comics uh, might be able to appreciate it. So um, we're just going to ramble on about it for a few minutes. Uh, the story is written by uh, Steve Gerber. Or, I'm sorry, not Steve Gerber, Steve Englehart. Steve Englehart. And most of the art is by George Perez and a variety of different inkers. I'll just read the blurb on the back here. It says, uh, The Avengers fight the set serving Squadron Supreme in a clash between the Earths and head for the 19th century to keep the West from getting wilder. Continuity questions continue as Kang and Immortus mix it up, plus the menace of President Nelson Rockefeller. I mean, you know, come on. This is just old school goodness. Um, the story is a little bit more involved in that. Basically, one half of the team goes into the Old West to fight Kang, who is the Kang the Conqueror, the master of all time. And he's gone back to the 19th century to cause some mischief. And half the team teams up with these old leftover Marvel Western heroes, guys like the Two-Gun Kid and the Rawhide Kid and Kid Colt, you know, and they all the Western guys say things like polecat and talk like, you know, watered down John Wayne and whatnot. And they have their adventure while the other team in the present uh, finds out there's some hijinks going on at these evil corporation, the Brand Roxon Corporation, and so on and so forth. They run into these renegade heroes from another world and the fun ensues. Um, would people would be well what makes this interesting one thing is this is from the era in the mid to late 70s where the beast was in the avengers most people know the beast from the x-men but the beast was briefly a member of the the avengers and in this particular story the beast is actually cool uh beast is funny he's interesting he can hold his own in a fight he gets the plot moving he contributes to the resolution of the plot so this is the beast actually being cool uh later writers really didn't seem to know how to handle a character and he just kind of hung around and told jokes and got you know slapped around by the big bad whenever you know doc doom showed up or whatever but this is the beast being cool uh this is also notable for the first appearance of uh hellcat you know who's a character marvel starting to use again uh patsy walker was actually originally i believe uh a character that was used in the 50s or 60s marvel put out sort of kind of humor comics kind of vein of like betty and veronica and and patsy walker was one of those type of characters they brought her back and used her as a supporting cast when the Beast had his own solo series. When the Beast joined the Avengers, when then she followed around, followed along, and she became Hellcat. Uh, this story also has what I call, or I think of as the definitive Squadron Supreme story. Uh, the Squadron Supreme are heroes from another Earth. Uh, you read into it, you realize they're basically a parody of the Justice League of America. When I was a little kid, like maybe, I don't know, first reading is like nine years old, ten years old. At first, I didn't quite get it. But things were sort of similar about the characters. And I was like, well, you know, Lana and Lois, and why have they laid the page out like this? And blah, blah, blah. And then rereading it again months later, and it was like, oh, now I get it. They're goofing on the JLA, ha, ha, ha. And, of course, I enjoyed it on another level, you know. Um, another thing that's interesting is this is coming right off the heels of Vietnam and Watergate. So there's a lot of subtle uh, political satire here. There's nothing stridently liberal or stridently conservative. 
but you do get the whole idea of how uh, governments or corporations may abuse their power, how, hey, how people in relationships, man, women, may abuse their power. So you get that angle of it. Um, another thing I didn't get when I read it, like as a small kid, didn't get the whole Nelson Rockefeller bit, you know. Read it a few years later when you're a teenager, it's like, oh, you know. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. Um, the art is a little bit shaky in some of the places just because, like I said, it's a young George Perez and they give him different inkers um, almost every chapter. Vince Coletta does a couple of chapters. Uh, Mike Esposito does a couple of chapters. My favorite ones are the ones by Mar uh, Sam Granger. Um, but it's still very dynamic, action packed, lots of clean lines. It's George Perez, you know. He hasn't risen to the heights that he rise to a few years later. But it's definitely worth checking out. Another thing that's really interesting is this is back in the 70s. So this is before people got, um, you know, it was before they were starting collecting these things in trades and so on and so forth. Uh, there's none of that sort of decompression, none of that sort of, uh, well, I'm writing for the trade, so you're not going to get some issue that's, you know, 20 pages of setup, you know, you're not getting whatever. 20 pages of Hawkman looking for his car keys, and then a last splash page as he finds them, you know, gets into the Hawkmobile or whatever. It's uh, the whole idea that every issue is somebody's first, so, you know, you've got to establish the characters and get to the action. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of breakneck pacing uh, if you read it in all one sitting, but it's still lots and lots of fun. Um... I kind of get the idea of with some of the Avengers comics that are coming out now, not so much in, uh, well, definitely not in the Brian Bendis stuff that's uh, going on in uh, New Avengers, but a little bit in Dan Slott's version of Mighty Avengers. I get the feeling Dan is trying to get back to this type of thing. You know, this is what an Avengers comic book was. This is Earth's Mightiest Heroes, a couple of solid B-listers, um, fancy headquarters, earth-shaking menaces, and you just go for broke. Not a lot of sitting around, hand-wringing. You're not going to get 20 pages of, you know, Joe the Plumber who, you know, was hanging around that day the Avengers had the big fight. You get the big fight. Um, so I would, uh, you know, I would advise anybody who's uh, who likes the Avengers, anybody who's a fan of the Beast, anybody who likes... Uh, Patsy Walker and Hellcat, anybody who likes Captain America, Iron Man, and uh, Thor, all these people are in it. If you like the Vision from the new Avenger or from Young Avengers, check it out. Um, I got my copy, well, the retail price was uh, $15.99. I'm sure you can probably find it uh, at that price or cheaper if you hunt around for it. Anyway, good, solid superhero comics. Just thought I'd share that with you. Like I said, anybody who has an, uh, a love for old school comics, Silver Age comics, you know, 70s Avengers, let me know what you think. Uh, thanks, and God bless.